everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Adoptions from the Heart TV. I'm your host, Amanda Alberti. Oftentimes, when we're talking about the birth parent experience, usually people will only focus on birth mom. But we try really hard to make sure that the birth father side of things is also talked about. Today, we are lucky enough to sit down with birth father Doug, who's going to share what it was like for him in placing his son for adoption. Thank you so much, Doug, for taking the time to join us today. We're really excited to welcome a birth father to share your story. Yes, thank you for having me, Amanda. I appreciate it. So, Doug, can you take us back to when you first learned that you would, were expecting a child and kind of what conversations were had? There was a few conversations. Um, next steps. I, w- I was adopted as a kid, so I always thought that was a great way to move forward financially. And as a pair, you're not ready for a child. So I always made her feel comfortable with that. And Katie got on board and um, really wanted to get into pursuing an adoption agency. When Katie first told you that she was pregnant, um, what were some of those initial conversations? Has you Had you guys talked about all of your options, parenting, adoption, possibly having help from other family members? Had you kind of like talked through everything, including adoption? Yes, yes. We definitely talked about, you know, family members being part of it. But I knew from the beginning that we weren't together. So we, we, we were gonna love our child and for the best thing for him was to um, have him go to the right family for him to be happy. What were your major reasons why you felt adoption was the right path for your child? I think that timing wasn't correct. Financial reasons, big part of it. Um, always, you can always figure out a way. We, all, we wanted to make sure that um, the baby was going to be in the right situation from our point of view, you know, that was, that was that. We chose pretty quickly, you know? And and what was your experience like when you called adoptions from the heart? I'm not sure if it was you and and Katie or just Katie, but what was that experience like when you got connected to a social worker at the agency? It was very smooth, honestly. um, You know, as soon as we called, they got us in, they made made us feel comfortable. Any sort of pressure that you felt like you had to do adoption? No, zero. Zero, zero pressure. It was the right option for us. So that's what we went with. And we felt very comfortable. Doug, what would you suggest to another guy who maybe like just found out that um, the girl or his partner he's with is pregnant and they're considering adoption, but they're really scared of making that first phone call. Like what would you suggest him or advise him? Um, Just always keep an open mind, you know, you don't have to dive into it, you know. If it's an option for you guys, I recommend giving a call to the adoption agency and talking. It definitely would help a lot. Um, but yeah, just keep an open mind for sure. Absolutely. And what what did you know about adoption before you called Adoptions from the Heart? It sounds like you're adopted yourself, so obviously you have right. that in your family. Um, but had you known anything specifically about open adoption and what options you and Katie would have in choosing that path? I didn't know too much about the process and open adoption and everything. Um, so when we found out we could have an open adoption, that was very good for us that helped us out a lot being able to stay in touch makes us happy and comfortable and you know making sure he's happy the baby so that's always a good feeling so and did you guys review profiles and select the adoptive family prior to her delivering or afterwards i think it was prior Prior. yeah prior yeah 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 definitely prior Yep. And did you participate in that? Did you look through the profiles of prospective yes. families? Talk to me a little bit about that experience. What was that like? It's honestly a fun experience to be able to see all the families that could use a loving child, you know, in their lives that aren't able to have them themselves. I thought it was a fun process. I enjoyed watching, uh, looking at all the families. 
and um, being able to figure out who was the right family for us, you know, yeah, so. And, and the million dollar question, <laughs> what, what made you choose the family that you chose for your child? They were just perfect, honestly. Pete, well, the adoptive, the uh, adoptive father, um, you know, we had a lot of connections. He was adopted as well. So, you know, there's things like that that really connected us. Um, Meg, she was so nice and caring and just a beautiful soul. So we just felt that they were the perfect couple. Um, they really took interest in us. So I thought that it was the perfect connection between us. And um, I thought they would be perfect parents. So we both did, me and Katie. And it worked out well, perfect, yeah. Great, that's beautiful. So as a birth father who looked at profiles before, what advice would you give to prospective adoptive parents who are making their profile? Like what, what could they put in there that could really make a difference in, in their selection process? That's a good question. Um, for us, I feel like, you know, growing up, outdoors, sports, you know, I feel like foodies, just, you know, little quirky stuff that we loved. Katie, you know, she did a lot of that stuff, so. I let her take care of that. But yeah, that was like my stuff, like, you know, outdoors, sports, food. It, it sounds like the family put a lot of who they are, um, you know, what they enjoy to do for fun, types of yes. food, things like that is what ultimately exactly. drew you there because you were able to get a sense of who are these people. Exactly. Yeah. So those were nice connections that we had. So. Great. And had you guys decided on what the future would look like in terms of the future contact with openness of like visits and getting pictures and letters? Had you had those discussions with the adoptive parents? Yes, we did have those discussions. Um, those are wonderful. Being able to uh, have updates and we've gone to visit and see him a couple times over the past year. So those are all beautiful memories we'll have, you know, for the rest of our lives and going forward be able to see him and keep the contact so we really appreciate that and so you guys have had a couple of visits now since placing your son right because he was placed in in january of 2021 correct yeah two visits yep That's yeah. Wonderful. um yeah what was it like to have that first visit was it you know exciting Ooh. overwhelming no not no it was exciting because we had met them previously at the agency so we met them before after that, yeah, you know, they came up and saw us, we went to the park, enjoyed the sun, had some food, it was, it was enjoyable, we had a good time. I wasn't overwhelmed, I was just excited to see, you know, the family, so. People often wonder, like, how do birth parents have the strength to choose adoption? What, what helped you throughout this process? I think me and Katie supporting each other was a, a big, big part, you know, we, stayed eye to eye we wanted we always wanted the best for the baby you know so i think being in sync you know so to speak and wanting the best for him was definitely what kept us going through a lot well and i, I want to point out i think you mentioned earlier you and the birth mom were not together right Correct. when placement occurred and the baby was born and you chose adoption and it sounds like you guys were mature enough you cared about each other enough you cared about your son enough to put him first, right? right? And your relationship together grew and you have this bond that ultimately helped you get through it despite not being together. Right, yeah, we yeah, we, we will always have a bond, you know? So um, it's, it's pretty special. I always, you know, no matter what happens, you know, we always have that special bond and we, you know, we stuck it out together. Well, and sometimes, Doug, when we, when we as social workers connect with birth fathers, if birth mom and birth father are not together, that can sometimes cause like an additional layer to what's happening. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily in a relationship with this person, you're not on the same page. And mm -hmm. I'm curious, like what advice could you give to other guys who like understand why she's choosing adoption, maybe mm -hmm. support it to a certain extent, but are kind of iffy, like, eh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm okay with placing my child for adoption. That's my child. I want to raise my child. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them? I would say just be selfless, you know, 
it's not all about you. There's another person involved, you know, just, yeah, be selfless. It's not all about you. Well said. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's part of being a good parent in general, right? Is taking yeah. responsibility and make, making selfless decisions for your child. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. As a birth parent, anything you want the community to know about your journey, um, your experience with adoptions from the heart, open adoption, anything about your, your uh, story that you want people to know that you feel like is not really understood well? I feel like open adoption. I don't know, because I didn't know about it. Like, I, I never knew. So being able to communicate and just open communication, I feel like is pretty much pretty key. And especially in the beginning, when after the like Katie, the, the birth mother gives birth, there's there's hard times in the, in the first year, I feel like. And them helping us out by keeping in contact with us, pictures, updates, visiting, like we get to visit even just like once or twice a year. Is, it's beautiful. So and for you, um, being an adoptee yourself, how did or it or did it um, your placing your son for adoption? Did that have any impact on you as an adoptee? Like, did you have any conversations with your parents? I'm not sure if you have an open adoption yourself, but did that kind of connect at all? Yeah, um, I've had a connection with my birth parents, but I feel like it would have it would have been nice. Like, I just want my son to be happy, so I'm, I'm always going to be here no matter what. So that's all that matters to me. I don't really, you know, the past is the past. Did, did having a closed adoption and not having as much of a connection to your birth parents reinforce for you why you want to have a relationship with your son through open adoption? Yeah, there's definitely some reinforcement there, but I'm just, I just want him to be happy. No matter what, even if I wasn't adopted or, you know, I would always have the same feeling either way seeing him grow up, seeing the pictures and letters, having the visits and yeah. seeing that smile on his face. Yeah, it's 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 so nice to see. So wonderful. Anything else that you'd like to to talk about or share? I know I know Katie has um joined a lot of our supportive resources. Have you heard mm -hmm. from her perspective like what has helped her as a birth parent? Yeah. Um she's talked about, you know, the group meetings and talking to each other and uh, supporting each other i think that's that's awesome and so um yeah she's she's mentioned it and she loves it she she's i can definitely see over the past year she's gotten a lot happier so i'm happy for her people are sometimes curious when they're trying to understand who birth parents are why they choose adoption they often wonder what does life look like after placement right a year later two years later ten years later like what do you envision in terms of your relationship with, with your son, with the adoptive family? What do you want for yourself in terms of your future? I want my son to just prosper, be happy. I want the family to be so happy and take good care of him. So I just want to be able to keep the updates and being able to see him a couple of times a year is, is nice. You know? Yeah, that's what I'd like to see in the future. You know, I'll always be here for him. So no matter what. Well, we really appreciate you, Doug. I mean. Facing an unplanned pregnancy in general is difficult for both the woman and the man. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were able to be strong enough and courageous enough to support your partner in figuring out not what's in the best interest of you guys, but what's in the best interest of your son mm -hmm. is a really wonderful thing. And we as a community are just happy to hear that you've come full circle that you were able to be there and support the birth mom through placement. Um, and, and ultimately you have a beautiful open adoption with yes. your son and with his adoptive family. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're so happy everything worked out, you know? So yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I really do. People are excited at the opportunity to just meet a birth father and hear your yeah. story and hear your perspective and kind of what you went through on this journey. Cause oftentimes the focus is just on the woman, right? She's the one carrying that child. She's the one in the hospital, um, but it's not just about the birth mom. Whether you're with her or not, you are a part of that journey and you're a piece to this whole, you know, bigger picture of, of your son's life. 
And I think he's going to grow up knowing that you're a pretty awesome guy. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to try my best, I'll tell you. Thank you so much, Doug. And, you know, again, we're hopeful that our community is able to be inspired, learn more about the birth father perspective in adoption. Um, and we're also hopeful that men who are possibly considering adoption, maybe they just found out that um, their partner is pregnant and they're considering adoption as an option, they should call Adoptions from the Heart, talk to a social worker. Even you could talk to someone like Doug and he can kind of share his experience with you of what it was like. So don't be hesitant. We're here to support you. So thank you so much, everybody. And tune in next week for another episode of Adoptions from the Heart TV.